Good morning. I'm Victor Zhao, the president of the National Academy of Medicine in the United States. I'm also the co-founder and co-chair of the Innovation in Global Health Profession Education, the program that you're attending today. So I'm so glad to see all of you here for the fourth annual meeting of uh, IGHPE. And in this one, we're gonna deal with emerging technology enabled themes in health profession education, a very important topic. I'm sorry I can't be here with you in person, so I'd like to deliver the message to you to frame up the meeting and to wish you well. We're all aware that technologies are changing the way that we do things, the way we access information, the way we communicate, and the way we conduct our affairs. However, technology is also transforming healthcare and health professional education, as well as their practices, and this is why we're here today. If I can show you the first slide. So this is a quote from the Macy Foundation. It says, technology can enhance the foundations of the fundamentals of effective pedagogy and cognitive science. Technology also has great potential to support other broader shifts in health professions education. Enables collaboration and teamwork between and among faculty and students from different health professions and sites and facilitates partnership with patients, families, and communities to improve care and health outcomes." End of quote. How well said. Now the next slide shows you the range of technology and harnessing the power of teaching, learning, and patient care. Because this range of technology, which includes internet, smartphones, mobile applications, clinical decision support systems, virtual and augmented reality, even serious gaming, but certainly robotics, simulation, and important artificial intelligence. Because it is, these are so important because these technology allow students to learn from anywhere, reducing the need for face-to-face -face instruction, which is very resource intensive, as you all know. As a result, these tools should theoretically help to reduce the cost of education. Therefore, as students face rising tuition costs and concerns about the extended duration of education, the new education modalities such as the ones I talked about are replacing traditional lecture and lecture rooms and theaters. For example, in Europe, Digital Education Holdings, called DEH, and the Kinnop Foundation has created a new education platform called EDU, which offers a medical degree program that is inexpensive and combines hands-on practical training with digitally supported instruction formats and a student-centric approach to adaptive learning. So in this regard, I, you, you can see how important this technology will be for education and for practice. Next slide. I'd like to say a few words about inter artificial intelligence, machine learning as an example in health education and training. AI-based tools can collect and synthesize vast amounts of information, make it accessible to students and trainees so they can quickly digest that information. Second, AI machine learning can demonstrate what the best practices are Trainees can learn and access their performance against expert or collective standards set by AI-based tools. So for example, AI can help students and trainees to learn via remote consultation conducted through the cloud using collective intelligence of medical community. This already exists. A project called the Human Diagnosis Project is an open online platform that deploys machine learning algorithms to help providers and trainees to find specialty treatment advice for their patients, connecting them with curated experience from many, many physicians worldwide. Similarly, AI and machine learning, particularly in areas such as image recognition, can be a tool to guide competencies of students and trainees. 
And of course, AI tools can also show promise for improving surgical skills because the use of sensors, simulation technology combined with AI-based analysis will provide new and innovative models for assessing hands-on clinical skills and help us understand what characterizes surgical expertise. So, technology can help us address barriers and challenges related to healthcare, and importantly, also to the workforce training. Next slide. As you all know, workforce is central to the managing uh, and the delivering of care all over. However, a key barrier is worldwide shortage of healthcare workers. The WHO report in 2016 called Working Together for Health described then a global shortage as a crisis. Unfortunately, the signs that, are that the situation is worsening. In just this last year, WHO forecast an 18 million shortfall by 2030, over twice the 7 million shortfall estimated in 2013. So emerging technologies will play an important role in addressing this challenge. Certain technologies can provide platform for learning, particularly in underserved areas where geographically it can be challenged to attend classes or have clinical experience or to embark on learning experience without the assistance of technology. Healthcare worker shortage in rural areas can use e-learning and internet for training and retaining medical students and doctors in different rural areas such as we see in Australia and Arkansas in the United States. Can also address the issue of faculty shortage because the use of technology uh, can actually enable teaching without the need for a large number of experienced retired faculty and uh, making content accessible and scalable. So as you can see, technologies have great potential to transform health education practice. This will of course require lots of work, much more discussion debate among you guys and stakeholders. So this is why I'm so pleased to see that IGHPE is taking on this important topic. At this meeting, these will be the themes that will be covered. What is the role of e-learning and technology in health professional education and healthcare delivery? How to leverage new technology to address challenges of future healthcare workforce? How will AI disrupt the healthcare space? Can the design of healthcare sites impact patient outcomes? And is it possible to better align education and training workforce needs? So I'm so glad that you're all here today, and I look forward, although I can be in person, hearing about your great discussion and see what comes out of it. Thank you very much.